So I'm Constantina Zerva and work at the School of Mathematics at the University of Edinburgh. So this talk is about my first attempt to add their activity using JSX graphs on Helm workbooks uh, in Stack. So here is the outline of my talk. Uh, I'll start by introducing uh, Helm workbooks, which were the basis of our project. So Helm is an acronym, stands for Help Engineering Learn Mathematics. Then I'll briefly introduce Stack, and I'll describe how we transformed the, the Helm workbooks uh, into online Stack workbooks. And finally, I, I'll show you my, my first attempts, very humble attempts to add some uh, interactivity using JSX graphs. Uh, the mathematical education of engineers and scientists uh, is, is important. It is quite common for math department to offer like um, uh, service teaching to engineering to engineering departments. So the Helm workbooks are a series of uh, flexible workbooks for uh, uh, undergraduate engineer students, and they cover the basic mathematics and statistics teaching that is useful for first and second year students in a typical UK curriculum uh, and probably also curriculum in other countries. Uh, so the workbooks were developed by the HELM consortium led by the Loughborough University. Uh, the project was founded by a grant from the Higher Education Funding Council for uh, England. It took three years to develop and they were released in 2005. Originally, HELM had online support, but all that remained back in 2020 were the PDF files of the 50 workbooks. Uh, so now I'll, I'll talk a bit about Stack and I saw other people had talks and use Stack. So probably some of you already know what Stack is. Uh, so Stack is an online assessment for mathematics and sciences. It is an optional plugin for Moodle quiz and for the LIA system that is used in Germany. Uh, it uses a computer algebra system at the background. Students can type an answer as the form of algebraic expression. And of course, with Stack, we move assessment beyond the multiple choice questions. So Stack uh, has some key design choices. Teachers should be able to write their own questions without needing to have a lot of programming uh, background. Stack separates validity from correctness, which is a, a very key feature. So if a student types something that is invalid, let's say sign X without having the brackets around X, so they will get a message that the answer is invalid and they won't get penalized for, for technicality. So with Stag, multi-part questions uh, are possible. And this rich in various features. The questions can be randomized. We have different types of input. We have algebraic input, matrices, numerical input, strings, and a few more. Uh, it is possible to give partial credit for the student's answer. Uh, Plots in Maxima can be dynamically generated and follow the randomization. It is possible to support line by line uh, reasoning by equivalence, and it provides full support for uh, scientific units. And uh, of course, you can always uh, uh, get into our demonstration site and play a bit with, uh, with Stack Around. So, um, what is the underlying pedagogy we had in mind when we started translating the Helm workbooks uh, into online workbooks? Uh, as we say in Edinburgh, we try to put the book inside the quiz. So all materials are inside the quiz. So the written notes, theory, some video clips, uh, practice questions, and the and online assessments uh, are part of, uh, of the quiz. And we started that in 2018 by creating a fully online course, The Fundamentals of Algebra and Calculus that was created by my colleague, George Kinner. So uh, our goal was to combine uh, the underlying pedagogy of FEC with HELM and create some comprehensive workbooks for engineers and scientists, which are based on coherent the tests and resources, the HELM workbooks, and the each individual PDF file uh, was has a manageable size, so it was big enough to be worthwhile as, as a single quiz. Uh, so how we did it? So the project was undertaken by a group of interns and staff at the University of Edinburgh and Loughborough University. So the interns converted the Helm source to Moodle, 
they implemented question within stack where possible. They, they also use some Moodle multiple choice and other Moodle question types, uh, uh, wherever necessary. So for the stack question specifically, uh, we try to have sensible randomizations. Uh, the authors wrote fully work solutions for every question. Uh, they created the potential response trees. They pre-generated variants for every question. They added test cases and they wrote sensible question notes. Okay, try to write sensible question notes. So uh, we tried to convert all the images uh, from the PDF into SVG, SVG files, mainly for accessibility reasons. Uh, so the authors followed strict guidelines so that uh, the workbooks had consistency. And when each of the sections had converted to a Moodle quiz, uh, the work was reviewed by the local stack expert. Uh, that should be me, I'm not expert, but well. And uh, the, then the works were reviewed by the course organizer. And uh, when it was raised, it was tested by a group of undergraduate students to find out any typos and, and small mistakes. Uh, so uh, during our first attempt, so back in 2020, we didn't have any uh, interactivity. And that was a conscious decision uh, because our interns, which were uh, PhD students, they didn't have any prior experience to stack. So asking them to learn stack was uh, something challenging for them. And stack has a very steep learning curve. So asking them on top of that to deal with uh, uh, interactivity and learn JSX graph uh, mean that wouldn't have been sensible and they didn't have so much time to deal with everything. Uh, so last year, the summer of 2021, I had two inders which they've done some very basic JSX graph, and I played a bit around uh, the previous spring. So um, the, the Helm workbooks are getting released under Creative Commons license, and JSX graph have a, um, appropriate license, so we can use them. So how, how I started playing with the JSX graph, I'll say my starting point was the JSX graph book. I really went through through the book, through the first part of the books, and I was literally copying every single line of code and trying to understand what the code is doing. And also, I used a lot of the, the website because it has a, a whole library of examples. So I was often finding an example that was doing something similar to what I wanted to do and copying it, copying the code and then uh, change it. Uh, so how to use JSX graph into stack? There is a way you can easily embed JSX code within the stack question. So this example here is taken from uh, our demonstration site. I have, I have the link there. It's a very simple example of how to create uh, a plot of a, a very simple function. So at the top here, uh, we have the maxima code where we define our variable. So we want to define the constant A and the function sine X plus A, and we want to, to plot this function. So within the question text uh, here, uh, we, can, um, we can add the JSX graph block. And inside this block, we write our, our JavaScript code. Uh, this, is a very, this is a very simple code just for plotting a function. And if the code is correct, uh, we should take uh, something like this. Uh, interestingly, whenever at the very beginning, whenever I was writing a JSX graph code, my, my graphs looked more towards this, so an empty screen. And there were a few, a few possible issues uh, that can give you this, apart from having a broken code. So possible traps that I figure out is comments. So as you can see here, there is this comment, this comment line. Uh, what I figure out is that when I use the two slashes, sometimes this interferes with the line breaking and uh, my whole JSX graph code gets a big comment. So I try mainly to use the slash star as comment. Uh, I always figure out stars works much better. Nothing can go wrong with stars. And the, another possible issue is the HTML editor. 
if you go on the previous link that I had from our demo server that we have a section about JSX graph, what is mentioned there, first of all, is to deactivate the HTML editor and use a plain editor, especially if you try to edit something in the HTML editor or copy paste from a different code, it can create errors. So I try whenever I deal with JSX graph to just change my default editor to the plain editor. Uh, so how we use JSX graphs or Helm? Uh, the most simple approach was to create some images, some shapes that follow the randomization and have the right scale. So in this example, this is like the, the picture from the PDF files where I ask the students uh, to solve the right, uh, the right angle triangle and find the remaining angles and the remaining uh, sides of the triangle. So by having this, um, this picture in, in the question, the beginning, it was impossible to have any randomization because uh, the, the value of the angle and the length were given on, in, the, in the picture. Uh, so I tried later on to create uh, the triangle using JSX graph so, uh, so that the values of the angle and the, and the sides that appear on the triangle, they follow the randomization that they give on this question. So I, I, I pick a very simple question as an example here that I can have all my, all my maxima code uh, on the left. What I found very useful is to define my bounding box into the maxima code and then call it um, in the JSX code. So in this very simple example, uh, I try to have my bounding box and my triangle to nicely fit inside the, 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 the bounding box. Um, so having the appropriate bounding box become more useful when we plot graphs of functions. So a whole Helm section is about the area bounded by curve and the students are asked to find the area underneath a curve between uh, uh, two values uh, of X. So here I use my the maxima code to find the bounding box and also to find uh, the values for the uh, Y axis sticks and then have them into the JSX code. So in these questions, the JSX graphs appear as feedback. So appear in the work solutions, not in the questions. We expect students to actually draw the graph probably by themselves and then make some attempt on the question. So I try to have the minimum values on the axis, not overwhelm them with information. So only the two points that they need to find the, in the integral and the relevant values on the Y axis. And uh, here is an example of trying to add some interactivities. I played a bit with sliders. So that's an example from uh, a Riemann sum. And the, the students can drag some sliders in this example and some similar examples and, uh, and change uh, here the steps on this interval. Uh, so, I didn't play a lot with the activity, so I have a set of questions that look similar to this. So future plans regarding Helm, uh, we release the materials under Creative Commons license. So that will happen over the next few weeks. Actually, it should have happened, but because I got ill and I have my child out of school, I left, I was behind with a lot of things. So I have, I have the, the workbooks uh, ready and I need to just upload them on GitHub. And we want to review the missing materials and try to complete the set. So we created workbooks that we needed mainly in our teaching because we used Helm in our engineering mathematics over the last two years, but we haven't completed the whole set of work. So regarding the J6 graphs in Helm, uh, so I want to add some J6 graphs um, in, in the existing materials that we already have and in the new ones, wherever appropriate. And also I would like to use the JSX graph as part of the assessment, which is something I haven't done, I haven't done yet. Um, uh, so uh, also a small announcement. 
as a part of the Erasmus Plus projects, we are organizing some multiplier events at the University of Edinburgh. Uh, one of them will be specific about JSX Graphene Stack that will be on the Thursday, 8th of December. Uh, so if, if you'd like to attend, I think they will be hybrid events so people can come uh, in Edinburgh or they can attend the events online. Uh, so there will be some more information in our uh, website soon enough. And uh, yes, I think that that was me. Thank you for attending. And if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to ask. M maybe I, I tried not to do it as part of my presentation. Maybe I could show you how how the workbooks uh, look on stack. Oh, probably I should reset my screen because I have them on my other monitor. Yes, I'll try to do it at the end of the presentation. So I'll, I'll randomly pick. So this is our demo server where I have all the Helm workbooks. I'll randomly pick um, one of them. So the students have some uh, uh, background theory of the problems. They can read the theory. They have some small tasks that they fill in. Maybe a bit more theory. Constantina, yes. at the moment we can't see your screen. Oh, you can't see my screen. Oh, apologies. I'm really sorry about that. Your second screen. Yes, it's my second. Sorry, yes. I'm sorry about that. Can you see it now? No. Yes. Now. Yes. Now. Yes. Okay. So I'll I'll, I'll start again. So I'll pick I'll pick a random workbook. We need some time to reload. So yes, so as you can see, the students have some uh, background theory that, that is about common functions, about polynomial functions. They can read through the theory. They have some tasks that they can play around so they can understand the theory a bit better. And then they have some exercises to solve, probably more theory. So they, they, they don't just read the theory, but they have some tasks in between and probably some questions uh, at, the end, at the end of the workbook. So they, they have a better experience of their learning because they can do some tasks while, while reading the theory. Maybe that's more engaging than asking them to just um, read the book. And I think I'll stop. I'll stop sharing here. Yes. So feel free to ask any any questions.